This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay then, uh, today is Wednesday and you know the score with these Wednesday videos by now. Basically I like to share with you what I hope will be some useful information, uh, tips and tricks of the trade, that kind of thing. And I thought today I'd get round to doing this video on uh, this piece of software, Audacity. Um, I said I'd do something like this ages ago and uh, it's took me till now to get round to doing it. If you don't know what Audacity is, it's basically a free, um, very basic DAW, digital audio your workstation um, it's just basically an audio editor and you can do lots of really useful things with it so let's look at five of the things that I use it for all the time fixing the pitch okay this is a particularly useful little uh, trick you can use audacity for there are going to be times when you want to play along with a piece of music maybe you want to figure out what's going on in the piece of music and maybe it's a tune or a song that was recorded in the 60s or the 70s, basically before the era of, um, you know, electronic guitar tuners, basically. Um, so it'd be one of those situations where all of the instruments on the track are in tune with themselves, but aren't necessarily, you know, tuned to uh, concert pitch 440, basically. Um, another... Um, time when you tend to get this happening is if um, a band has recorded a, a song where there's an acoustic piano on it um, don't look back in anger by oasis springs to mind and you know maybe the piano is a little bit out of tune in tune with itself but again not tuned to um, concert pitch 440 so you can either call out a piano tuner who charges you know by uh, the hour or by the day uh, to come and retune the piano or you can just retune all the guitars to the piano and that that's often what happens so the track will end up being not fully in tune or it's in tune with itself but it's not tuned to concert pitch right so i've got a piece of music loaded in here this is one of my tunes that i've deliberately put out of tune a little bit and um, if I record myself playing along with it now, you'll hear, you. <coughs> excuse me, that it's um, not quite in tune. You can hear that it's just a little bit out. Um, so, yeah, we need to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the whole track here. Okay, just click into this part of the track and you can see it, uh, if I unselect it, you can see that's what it looks like. And then when it's selected, it lights up like that. And we go into the effects menu and change pitch. And you can see what I've done here to, to sort of simulate this. I've already... Uh, changed it uh, by minus 2.5 percent i've detuned it so let's go uh, back up 2.5 percent and then just hit ok like that and let's uh, mute that um, track there where i was uh, playing along with the out of tune version and if i now play along with this it should have fixed it And as you can hear, I um, don't know why that's uh, suddenly muted as well, but yeah, um, there we all just mute that one. Um, as you can hear, when we play that back, yeah, that's now in tune with the track. So fixing the dodgy tuning of um, a recording that you're trying to play along with or trying to figure out is one of the easiest things to do in Audacity. Gone are the days where you used to have to retune your guitar to the track you were playing along with. Now you can retune the, the track to your guitar. Slowing down the lick. Okay then, another situation I'm sure that we all have faced from time to time is where you have to uh, learn a particular lick. 
or maybe you don't have to, maybe you just want to learn a particular lick. And the problem is that it's a bit fast and fiddly and you can't uh, figure out what's going on. So you need to slow it down in some way. Now, the traditional way of doing this back in the 70s and 80s was to... Um, you know, use the old record player technique. Basically, if you put a 45 RPM single on at 33 and a third, it used to drop it by a fifth um, and, you know, slowed it down and it would drop. So if something was in B minor, it would drop it down to F sharp minor, basically. And, you know, you could, it was slow enough that you could figure it out. Or, you know, you could put um, a 33 and a third album on at uh, 16 RPM and it would drop it pretty much as near as made no difference by an octave and play it at half speed. Uh, we don't need to do any of that sort of stuff anymore. We can use Audacity. Once again, I've uh, loaded one of my pieces of music. It just saves there being any copyright issues. And there's a lick in here that uh, rattles past at a fair old pace. It goes like this. So we're going to look and see uh, how we can... Um, you know, make that a bit slow. So first thing, I want to find out where the lick begins. I've already uh, put the cursor on the uh, beginning of the lick, and let's just define where it's going to end. So it's going to end, let's say, just before that peak there. So let's just drag across to here, and we want to slow it down, but we're not going to change the speed, because changing the speed will affect the pitch. What we're going to do is go into the effects menu and we're going to change the tempo. And this is my usual default here. I'll take it down uh, minus 40%. So it'll now be playing at 60% of the original pitch. You can go down to any percentage you want, but the thing is you are stretching um, the same amount of audio information over a greater period of time and you will lose quality. Uh, by doing that, but if I just, I find 40% usually works pretty good. So there we go, and you can see how it's expanded that. Now let's have a listen to that lick again. And you stand a much better chance of being able to figure that out than you did when it was this. Yeah, it's just, it's going to be easier to do. So that's another use for Audacity, slowing down a particularly tricky lick in order to uh, figure out what's going on. Very useful. Looping the chord. Okay, I did a video a little while ago, a few weeks ago, about how to figure out chords by ear. And I featured this uh, little technique in that video. Um, basically, when you try to figure something out in the olden days, what you used to have to do was, you know, you'd, you'd try to be kind of figuring out what this chord is or what that note is or something, and you'd have to be lifting the needle up off the, uh, off the vinyl and then kind of moving it back and, you know, probably ruining your, your vinyl album in, in the process, scratching it or, you know, you'd also you'd put it onto a cassette and then you'd be having to rewind all the time. Or these days, you know, you, you're kind of skipping back. Uh, on your mp3 player we, we don't need to do any of that what we can do is isolate uh, the, the thing that we're going to be um, you know interested in determining what it is and once again I've loaded one of my uh, tunes into here and let's just imagine I didn't know what the first chord of this tune was let's have a listen to it So, like that, basically. Uh, so, it's just that first chord. So, I'm just going to zoom in like this, just hitting these uh, little magnifying glass uh, arrows um, buttons here with the uh, plus and minus sign on. So, so, I can see that the first chord goes from there to there. So, if I just select that, make sure that you've got your select tool um, you know, kind of um, chosen up here. Uh, basically, the only two tools I use in Audacity are the selection tool and the time shift tool, which basically means you can drag and drop things along to uh, different points in the um, in the timeline. But we're using the selection tool here, so I've selected part of it. And now, if I hit play, which is the space bar on the keyboard, then I just get that chord, and I can play it as many times as I want. What I can also do is if I 
I hit the shift key on the keyboard and the space bar, it'll loop that chord. Like that. And uh, that makes it much easier to figure out what a particular chord is, what a particular lick is. You know, if you are uh, doing the, um, the thing that we did in the previous example where you're slowing a lick down, as well as slowing it down using that technique I showed there, you can loop it round and round like this so that you can, you know, just kind of try and get into the groove with it and um, figure out what's going on. So that's another really useful little trick in Audacity, the ability to loop something or isolate something that you're attempting to learn. Very, very useful little trick. Recording your speakers. Okay, yeah, this is another really useful thing that uh, you can do with Audacity. Uh, basically recording the output of your speakers. Um, a little while ago, oh, probably over a year ago, I uh, I did a little bit of a tutorial on this software called Chord Pulse. It's basically just a, a way that you can, um, you know, record or, or put together a, a little MIDI backing track. And um, it does sound a bit sort of 1980s Casio keyboard, but, you know, you can change the tempo of it, uh, you know, anything you want, really. Um, and you know it's better than playing to a metronome basically so you might want to make a little uh, backing track uh, of this an mp3 because the only problem with chord pulse is that you can't um, export audio from this it's basically just a midi thing dirt cheap as well it's only about 25 quid so if you haven't got chord pulse i'd recommend you uh, check it out i'll i'll uh, dig out the video that i did about chord pulse and uh, link to it below this video anyway let's say you want to record the output of your speakers which in this case here is going to be this little chord pulse chord sequence what we need to do is um, go to this menu here which when you launch audacity is always uh defaulting to mme I, I have no idea what these uh initials stand for i just know which ones to select so mme drop down that menu there and go to windows wasapi again no idea what that stands for and as soon as you do that for some reason on some systems mine included it defaults to a mono uh, kind of thing so we'll have to fix that in a moment but then go into uh, this menu here you can see where i've got a microphone usb audio codec uh, selected there that's basically my audio interface now i want to select the same one again um, usb audio codec but the one that says loop back and select that okay then Put this back to a stereo recording and if i hit record now there we go it's recording and then press play on chord pulse it's going to record the output like this So there you go, that's just recorded, let me stop that now, that's just recorded that little bit of, um, you know, audio from Chord Pulse. As you can see, it tends to record rather quiet, and I've never really found a fix to do this, because um, if I try turning the, uh, the the recording volume up, it just always defaults back to uh, this uh, kind of lower value. So, this is where we employ another nice little trick in audacity just simply um get that uh track selected there again you can select the whole track just by clicking into that pin there and effect menu then amplify and as long as you don't tick this little box here that says allow clipping and why would you um it will just basically sniff the audio that's been recorded and uh, work out the maximum amount of dbs it can apply to it without it um, you know starting to clip so we just do that and boom there you go and then you can um, export that just you know file export as mp3 as wav and whatever you want to export it as and you've got a 
you know, a nice little backing track that you can play along with in, in MP3 format, you know. And I use this all the time in my lessons if I'm just, um, if I just need to put a quick little backing track together to illustrate a point uh, for a student and, you know, just do it like this. Um, just send it through the, um, the, the Zoom chat and they've got it there at the other end and, you know, they can uh, play along to it in pretty much real time. Um, you know, you've got to be very careful when you're doing this, obviously, because, you know, um, there, it would be completely illegal for you to, uh, use this function to record audio from YouTube, maybe jam tracks or something like that. I would not countenance such behavior if you were, you know, thinking that, oh, I fancy a copy of this uh, jam track. It would be entirely illegal to do anything like that without the permission of the copyright holder. So just use it, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned for doing this kind of thing, recording stuff that you own the copyright to that's on your computer. Great little, um, you know, technique for uh, recording audio that otherwise you may not be able to have as an audio file. So check it out. Record yourself jamming. And now we come to what is perhaps the most useful thing you can do with Audacity, which is to record yourself playing. Uh, I always remember the, the first time I uh, went into a studio with a band I was in at the time, back in the late 80s, I think it was, and uh, recorded some tracks with the band. And listening back as an observer to the solos that I would regularly play on these songs that we were playing, you know, solos that I was playing night after night at, at gigs and thinking that, they, yeah, this is great, this works. And then you listen back as an observer and you think, oh, okay, that's not quite working the way I thought it was. Things that I thought were really cool and clever just sounded a bit too busy and fiddly and not really serving the song. So the point is, it's a great thing to do to be able to uh, listen to your own playing as an observer rather than a participant. That gives you a different perspective and allows you to uh, trim your sails a little bit more uh, in terms of what you're doing and, and develop your soloing instincts a little bit better. So uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, import a backing track into Audacity. This is just one I've used many times on YouTube before, just a little minor blues kind of thing. There's the MP3. All you got to do is drag and drop it into a Audacity session like that. And there it is. It sets up its own track and it's there. You don't have to do any messing around kind of configuring it. It's you drag and drop it in and it's there. I've got the guitar here that's plugged into the interface via the Sonic Egg Twiggy Blues. And um, as soon as I press R on the keyboard, which is uh, record, uh, or you can do it via the big red button up here, you know, uh, record or R, um, you know, I can record myself jamming. So let's do that. And there you can see um, I just recorded a little bit of uh, a solo there with a backing track. And then, you know, just in the same way you do for anything in Audacity, you want to save that as an MP3, you can just export as MP3 or as a WAV file. You may need to mess with the levels a little bit first. Let's have a listen to, uh, is the guitar too loud? Is it too quiet? Let's have a listen. <laughs> No, you know what? I think that'll uh, that'll do fine. Um, so there you go. Make keep it a little audio diary of your playing. Just record yourself a couple of times a week, or more, and um, listen back to the results. And you know, take notes and um, you know, make suggestions to yourself about what you can do to improve your playing. It's um, it's a really really valuable thing to be able to do, and it's that easy to do in Audacity. 
Yes, indeed. So there are five things that I use Audacity for on a regular basis. Very, very useful uh, little utility. And as I say, it's free. So, you know, why not go and grab it? I'll put a link in the description to uh, the download for Audacity so you can uh, go and grab it for yourself and try it out. Also, uh, up on my Patreon page, there's the uh, address and the link is in the description. I'll put those uh, five little uh, video clips up there that you've just been watching uh, uh, so that you can download and keep them if you are, you know, one of my wonderful, wonderful Patreon supporters. And, um, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll tab that last little bit of a solo out as well there when I was illustrating the uh, jamming along to a backing track. All of that will be up there on my Patreon page. It's only $3 a month or £2.50, and you get access to all of these bits and pieces that come along with these YouTube videos. I want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are linked in the description. And that is pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful and informative, and perhaps a little bit inspiring and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it of course it's usually on about this time of day that i mention the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where what we do is drink beer basically that's the prime reason for it and we have a good old natter about music and guitars and whatever else might crop up it's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend i would love to see you there if you can make it uh, but for now I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after you.